רק את היהווה, בהשם יהווה שי, בהשם רחב חודש. Welcome to another live lesson. The name of this one is Israel, a downgrade. Um, pretty much this lesson comes to the inspiration, you brothers already know, of this latest, uh, this latest addition to Vocab's Motley Crew. This guy, Justin Fran Reverend Justin Francis. And uh, pretty much what he said was, you know, um, that he's joint heirs. He said Christ, with Christ. You know, and why would I want to call myself Israel? Or why would I want to be Israel? Or something like that. That's a downgrade. Obviously, this guy does not know the scriptures. He doesn't know the first or last thing about the scriptures. He can quote scriptures because he was trained to do that. You could train a monkey to do certain tasks. That doesn't mean the monkey understands. You could teach a parrot to speak different languages. That doesn't mean the parrot understands. And all this guy is, he's just a parrot for plantation Christianity and white supremacy. That's what he is. All right. So I want to start off with the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, where he quoted from. And then we're going to get some precepts on it. And Lord's will it be edifying. This is the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse, I'll start at 14. It says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of the Most High, they are the sons of the Most High. And obviously this individual is not led by the Spirit of the Most High. Although he is a son of the Most High, because he is an Israelite. But the sons of the Most High are who? The Israelites. He says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Because adoption is what? That's Yahweh Shai dying on the cross. Adopting us back to the Heavenly Father Because He turned His back on us Because we turned our back on Him And He put us away Therefore we became orphans So Yahweh had to come on the scene Shed His blood to reconcile us Or bring us back into the good graces Of the Most High Yahweh And that is the story right there That's where it ends As far as you know who the Lord is dealing with But you have these plantation Christians That are going to do and say what they're going to do so it says, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. Who are the children of the Most High? The Israelites. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of the Most High and joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Now when you look up this word heir, the word for heir is Cleronomos, Cleronomos, one who receives, who, who receives by lot, an heir, an heir. In messianic usage, one who receives his allotted possession by right of sonship. One who has acquired or obtained the portion allotted to him. Right. And who are those heirs? Israelites. Because let's look up this word heir. Just bear with me one second. Look up the word heir. Give me a second here. We look up the word air. Come on. Air, a person who is entitled by law or by the terms of a will to inherit the estate of another. And we are we are um because Yahweh himself is an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. He was given a kingdom by the Heavenly Father, the Most High, and we are joint heirs with him, the Israelites. All right? Now let's look up the word inheritance. Let's look up the word inheritance. Inheritance. Hereditary succession to a title or an office or property. And pretty much that's what we're coming in the stead of. You know, we're coming with the Lord made us joint heirs with him. Now, to understand that, we have to go back to the beginning. So when we go to the book of Genesis, chapter 17, I'm just going to get two points, verses, uh, two, two uh, verses, seven and eight. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, this is the heavenly father speaking with Abraham, and thy seed, singular, after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant 
when you read up above it, it speaks about nations. Those nations are talking about Israelites because the nation of Israel will be scattered among all nations. But that's a different lesson for another time. To be a power unto thee and to thy seed after thee, meaning the Israelites. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their power. So did the Most High give all nations the land of Canaan, which was laid, laid a name to, the, to what? Israel. So the Lord did not give all nations, you know, that land. So the Israelites are the joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. We could close the book right there. Close the book, close the book. Shh, shh. <laughs> inside joke. That was two, 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 uh, two instances of inside joke. Uh, let's go to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 6, and we're going to start at verse 16, you know, yeah, uh, you know what, let's start at 14. Saying, surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. It's the most high again, speaking to Abraham. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Why? Because eventually the promise went from Abraham to, to uh, Isaac to Jacob. Jacob had the 12 patriarchs. They had sons, sons, sons. They went to Egypt. You know, went into captivity, were delivered out of Egypt, were in the wilderness 40 years, and eventually got what? The inheritance of the land of Canaan as the Lord promised his servant, his friend, Abraham. It says, For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them the end of all strife. So when the Lord gave the nation of Israel, the land of, of Israel, or Canaan, as an inheritance... That ended the strife because now we we can't we can't try to accuse the heavenly Father. Not that we could anyway. We can't accuse him of him not you know uh, um, not uh, uh, giving us what he promised Abraham because he did give it to us. We we the ones that didn't keep the the part of the bargain that we were supposed to keep. It says we're in the Most High willing more abundantly to show unto the what heirs of promise. See. There is an inheritance, an heir, an heritage by promise. And that was given to who? To Abraham and to his seed, singular. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. The children that came out of Jacob, that was a promised seed. The inheritors of the kingdom of heaven. It says, Wherefore the Most High willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs, of promise the immutability of the council confirmed it by an oath and that was a confirmation and what was actually the fulfillment of that agreement when the Lord finally gave us that land which he caused Joshua and Caleb to be the leaders of the time to lead into the land of Canaan the promised land that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for the most had to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled to refuge to lay hold to have uh, fled for fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us all right so that's the point on that now let's go from there let's go to the apocrypha all right and we're going to get a couple of precepts dealing with inheritance let's go to ecclesiasticus and the apocrypha the 24th chapter and the 8th verse. Ecclesiastes 24, verse 8. So the creator of all things gave me a commandment, and he that made me and he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest, and said, Let thy dwelling be in Jacob. Let thy dwelling be in Jacob. And thine inheritance in Israel. So who are the inheritors of this promise? The Israelites. Because the Israelites were the only ones that were given that promise. Abraham is not a father of all nations. All nations did not come out of Abraham. They pretty much came out of Noah. Which, which, whose line directly goes back to Adam. And then you had his three sons. Shem, Ham and Japheth. And they repopulated the earth. Abraham came through the line of Shem, then through the line of Raphaxed, all the way down. 
Abraham only had eight sons. That does not constitute all nations of the planet Earth. But one of those seeds that came through Isaac and then through Jacob were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Hence, in thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you will have Israelites scattered among all these different nations. Period. So let's read that again. So the creator of all things gave a commandment, not you, not vocab, not uh, uh, um, Reverend uh, um, Justin Francis, the Most High himself. It says, And he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest and said, Let thy dwelling be in Jacob and thine inheritance in Israel. Now let's go from there to the book of Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. See, because these wacky-tacky Christians, they accuse us of cherry-picking the scriptures. But the cherry-picking that we do through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Shai is the proper way to break it down. Because the scriptures say that, you know, uh, uh, line upon line, here a little, there a little, you know, precept upon precept, that's how the scriptures are broken down. But when they cherry pick, their cherry picking is done to, to uh, distort, twist, turn, you know, and pervert the gospel, the good news. So De Deuteronomy 32 and 8, when the Mosai divided to the nations their inheritance, which is what? Their lands. When he separated the sons of Adam, because there was a separ separation in the beginning, and there will always be a separation. This is why the Lord gave us the law, statutes, and commandments to separate us from other nations. He did not want us to be among the other nations because we were the inheritors of the promise. But you still have a lot of people that will negate that. That's why you have this individual that will make such a stupid statement that says he's a, he's a joint heir with Christ. Why would I want to call myself an Israelite? That's a downgrade. This is the mind of a bug out. This is a mind that is not well studied once again this individual was told and taught what to say they don't have their own mind to go into the scriptures and be able to break them down and, and further than that they don't have the holy spirit with them to help them break the scriptures down that's why you would make such an asinine statement as that and like i believe it was elder apostle gabar that said it you know he should have checked you on that when you said that it says when he separated the sons of Adam he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel right because he gave all nations he gave them their lands but he saved the best portion of land for the Israelites for the Lord's portion is his people Jacob is the lot of his inheritance so when this scripture said that we are joint heirs with the Messiah with Yahweh Shai because we are Israelites. Yahweh Shai himself is an Israelite. Hebrews 7 and 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Of the nation of Israel. He is the son of the heavenly father. The prince. Which was given the throne for an inheritance. And in, in turn. We were, we were made joint heirs with him. Because we were the promised seed that the Lord made with Abraham. And he confirmed that by an oath. And then he established it when he gave the nation of Israel the land of Canaan, which was later named the land of Israel. Get it? Now, let's go from there. Let's go to Psalms 33. I'll go through some of these precepts. I got quite a few that I wrote down, just building off of that word. And then we'll go as far as we can because I uh, got to get ready to close it up soon. All right, this is the book of Psalms 33 and 12. It says, I'll start at 11. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. You hear that? It says, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. That's why the scriptures speak about two immutable things. You cannot change the Most High's plans, His words, His laws, statutes, commandments. 
This is why those devils have something called replacement theology or supersessionism, which they exclude the nation of Israel and add all nations to it. That's not biblical. You took away and you added to the Bible. And you had to do that because when you read the Bible from cover to cover, it is evident that the people that the Lord is talking about and dealing with is the nation of Israel, no other nation. And you know this. That's why you have to, that, therefore you have to exclude them out of the picture to be able to put yourself in the picture. But you were never a part of the picture except for the, the part where you play the slave. And that's it. It says, uh, Blessed is the nation whose power is the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Come on, man. So who are the joint heirs? Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, is the heir. We are joint heirs with him. Who are the joint heirs? The Israelites. The original seed of the covenant. Now let's go from there to Psalm 68. Psalm chapter 68 and verse 9. It says, Thou, O Most High, didst send a plentiful rain, whereby thou didst confirm thine inheritance when it was weary who was that that was the script the the israelites thy congregation had have dwelt therein thou almost has prepared of thy goodness for the poor so this is talk it says the lord gave the word great was the company of those that published it right and to this day the word remains unchanged the children of the promise are the israelites those are the ones that were given the, the promise. That's why when Abraham's sons came, came of age, you know, he gave uh, uh, Isaac, you know, uh, um, the inheritance. He gave his other sons, you know, uh, a portion of gifts and all that. And he sent them all, all seven of them, he sent away from Isaac. Because Isaac was the son of the promise and he was supposed to be separated from them. Then when Jacob and Esau were born, the, the uh, lot fell on Jacob. And every child, every seed that came out of Jacob, that was the seed of the promise that the Lord made with Abraham. Those are the inheritors of the Lord. Now let's go to Psalm 74 and 2. It says, matter of fact, I started one. O Lord, why hast thou cast us off forever? Why doth thine anger smoke against the sheep of thy pasture, the Israelites? Remember thy congregation, which thou hast purchased of old, because he, got, he brought us out of the land of Egypt. The rod of thine inheritance, which thou hast redeemed this Mount Zion, wherein thou hast dwelt, which are the Israelites, the redeemed of the Lord. The ransomed of the Lord, the reconciled of the Lord by his son Yahweh Shai. Come on, man. But these guys, they know this, but they, they play stupid. Remember, it's all about gaslighting. Psalm 78 and 62. It says, He gave his word over also on, uh, I'm sorry. He gave his people over also unto the sword and was wroth with his inheritance. So who is the Lord's inheritance? We've read in many scriptures already that it's talking about the Israelites. Now let's jump down to the 71st verse. And it says, From following the ewes, great with young, he brought him to feed Jacob, his people, and Israel, his inheritance. Come on, man. You do need to stop playing. And like Elder Pastor said, you, you should find a good lawyer and, and sue, you know, and sue them. Though. You, maybe you can get Kleinberg. <laughs> Kleinberg. Uh, inside joke. Maybe he can get you off. He, he got Carlitos off. Uh, Psalms 94. 
because you've been ripped off. You've been hit by a smooth criminal. Esau is slick, boy. <laughs> Psalms 94 and 14. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. Come on, man. Now let's go from there. Let, let's let's uh, thicken let's thicken this gravy. The gravy is savory already, but let's thicken it up some more. Let's go to Psalms, same book, 106 and 5. See what that says. That I may see the good of thy chosen, that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation, that I may glory with thine inheritance. Because indirectly, this is, uh, if, I'm not sure if this was our King David, he was speaking about Yahushai. Because Yahushai is the inheritor. And we are the co heirs with him. You see? Now let's jump to the 40th verse. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance, meaning he avoided his own inheritance. That's why we got kicked out of the land. You dig? Now, let's move along. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 19. And this is just building off of the word inheritance. Psalms 19, and we're just going to go straight to the point. You can read further up. 19 and 25. Whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, because you have Israelites that would be in modern-day Egypt, calling themselves what? Egyptians or, in modern-day terms, Americans. And Assyria, the work of mine hands, because you have Israelites here that are also being called uh, so-called Americans, which would be Assyrians, because we went into captivity into all these nations, and today America symbolically, um, 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 symbolically, pretty good word, represent the Israelites, or, or these different nations that that we went in captivity under. It says, "And Israel, mine inheritance." So everywhere you turn, the inheritance of the Lord are the Israelites. So when this clown made that statement that to call himself an Israelite or Israel is a downgrade. This shows you how much contempt he has for the word of the Lord. Because remember, they're trained what to do. They're trained how to speak. They're trained in the scriptures that they bring out to cast doubt upon the truth. And that's the job of the devil. The job of the devil is deception. Two greatest um, blessings that he ever got was the blessing of the sword and the blessing of deception. And remember, the scriptures say that the deceived and the deceiver are his. So the Lord controls both sides. Now let's go from there to Isaiah 47 and 6. I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into thine hand. Thou didst show them no mercy. Upon the ancient has thou very heavily laid thy yoke. So all across the board, every, everywhere you slice it, the Israelites are the inheritance of the Most High. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 63 and 17. O Lord, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways and harden our heart from thy fear? Return for thy servants' sake the tribes of thine inheritance. Come on, man. The tribes of thine inheritance, the people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. We are thine. Thou never bearest rule over them. They were not called by thy name. Come on, man. Stop playing. All right, let's go from there to Jeremiah 10. You know, at this point, it's pretty much overkill, but hey, let's bring it out. Let's bring it out. Jeremiah 10, 16. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. So that's the Israelites. They are 
They are the rod of the Most High's inheritance. That is that the lot of people that the Lord chose. Now let's go from there. Let's go to the Apocrypha. Get a couple of precepts in the Apocrypha. Let's go to 2nd Ezra, chapter 8. 2nd Ezra, chapter 8, verse 45. It says, Then answered he me and said, uh, I'm sorry, 45, my bad. Be not wroth with us, but spare thy people, and have mercy upon thine own inheritance, for thou art merciful unto thy creature. Come on, man. Now let's go from there to Judith, chapter 13, and verse 5. For now is the time to help thine inheritance and to execute mine enterprises to the destruction of the enemies which are risen against us. Yeah, because at this time, Jake was catching hell. Now, let's go from there to the additions to the book of Esther. Right? Additions to the book of Esther. Uh, chapter 10. And verse, where is it? I wonder if I wrote the right one down. Just bear me one second. Uh, yep, here we go. This is, um, so the Most High remembered his people and justified his inheritance. <laughs> Come on, man. Now, let's just real quick, a couple of precepts, and then we close the lesson. Let's build on the word heritage. I believe we looked that word heritage up, but let's look it up again. Uh, let's see. Nope. Oh. Let's look up the word heritage. Heritage. Practices that are handed down from the past by tradition. Any attribute or immaterial possession that is inherited from ancestors. That which is inherited, a title or property or estate that passes by the law to their, to their heir on the death of the owner. Remember, it speaks about, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the testament is not a force while the testator liveth. But then once the testator uh, dies, then it gives the testament or that will force. And that's why Yahweh Shai died on the cross, so that we may be joint heirs with him. Let's go to the book of Psalms 94. Like I said, a couple more pieces, we could close it out. Psalms 94. And verse 5, it says, They break, uh, Psalm 94 and 5, They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage. Come on, man. Jeremiah 12 and 9, a basic fundamental building block scripture. 12 and 9, it says, Mine heritage, is the most high speaking, Mine heritage is unto me. As a speckled bird. The birds round about are against her. Come ye assemble. All the beasts of the field come to devour. So the Lord said mine heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. Because we are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. But the point is heritage. Now let's go to this precept here. This is the last one. But then we are going to go back to Romans. This is uh, the book of Joel. Chapter 3, we're going to start at verse 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, the nation of Israel brought back together, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, this is World War Three, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. All right, because that is the inheritance of the Most High. The joint heirs with Yahweh are Israelites. 
to whom pertaineth the adoption and the covenants and the giving of the law and the promises and the service of the Most High, whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Yahweh Shai came. These guys know this, but they're trained to do other things because they're agents. Romans 8 and 14, I believe it started at. Yep. For as many as are led by the Spirit of the Most High, they are the sons of the Most High, because you have the Israel of the Most High, and but not every just because you call yourself uh, just because you call yourself an Israelite, or you know that you're an Israelite, that doesn't make you an Israelite of the Most High. Because there's going to be a certain number that's going to be cut off in this time. But all Israel shall be saved eventually in the kingdom. But the ones that are led by the Spirit, these are the elect of the Most High, the sons of the Most High. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. And if children, you Israelites, then heirs, heirs of the Most High and joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. And that's why we had to be reconciled through the ministry of reconciliation back to the Father. Because we were that inheritance or that heritage that the Lord chose. And when we got when he when we made him upset, he kicked us out the house, so to speak. But now he's calling us back because we, we found favor in his sight once again. Because there was an actual propitiation in Yahweh Shai that was or an atonement that brought us back to the Father. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So the point is, and if children, then heirs, uh heirs of the most high. And joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. So who are the joint heirs of, of the Most High? The Israelites. So for a clown like that, like like uh, Justin Francis, to say that to call yourself an Israelite is a downgrade. It shows that he has a contempt for the word of the Lord. And it also it also shows that if he didn't know, if he just said that by chance, it shows you how much of how how inept. He is in the scriptures. You see? So wh whichever way, whether in pretense or in sincerity, Yahweh Shai is preached. And you're not going to stop this word, no matter what you do. It's a futile effort. You're not going to be able to stop it. And the, the more you come with your bullshit... The harder the, the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is gonna gonna push, the harder Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is gonna, you know, um, make this word come out. And all you're doing when you try to belittle the Israelites, the Hebrew Israelites, you just expose this truth more and more on different platforms. So indirectly, you're really working for the Most High on the left hand side. You know. Israel? A downgrade? Come on, man. Stop it. But you ain't gonna stop. Y'all gonna keep going because that's what devils do. So with that, I pray that you brothers and your few sisters have been edified. Until the next time I say, Shalom.